everybody, Roadside Writer here, and what I'm going to do for my video this week is continue my reading series for my dystopian science fiction ebook, Strand the Silver Radio. And the main reason behind that is that I'm really focusing my time and energy into a more in-depth uh, three interactive activity video for mysteries next week. Um, it's going to come with a worksheet and everything, so I wanted to give myself a little break here and just continue my reading of Strand while I work on something a lot more intense for you guys. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to say really quick thank you to everyone who's been supporting me uh, and following my journey these past couple weeks. Uh, I've seen a lot of growth in my YouTube channel, my Facebook page. Um, I've just seen a lot of love, a lot of good comments, a lot of people reaching out. And that's awesome. Um, you know, it's when you do something like this, uh, basically full time, it's really easy to get fixated on the numbers, to, to measure your success, to look at, well, what's my subscriber count? And, and, you know, if it's not advancing as quickly as you wish, then it can be very frustrating. But this is kind of a personal self-care announcement for whatever you're measuring your progress with while you're stuck inside during quarantine, especially other creators like me that are just starting out. Give yourself some time. Give yourself a day to relax and be kind to yourself. You know, 250 people almost that that is in this community we built ourselves. Um, you know, myself making the videos and everyone who participates in activities and comments and likes and everything. Um, we built something really cool, and if I could see 250 people in a room right now, that would seem like a hell of a lot of people that, you know, I did something good for. So, whatever you're measuring your progress with, if maybe it seems like you're not hitting those benchmarks in this really confusing time, give yourself a break. And I'll try to do the same. If you'd like to start supporting what I do with the Roadside Writer, it's as simple as clicking like, subscribe, and hitting the bell icon. You can become a patron to help me get rid of the banner in the lower part of the screen here. Um, and if you need more writing help than you can get from these free videos I do once a week, do yourself a favor and subscribe to my website. I do written writing tips. And check out my course, The Basics of Plotting a Novel. The puzzle piece method, what I teach in that course, has been featured in the Florida Writer magazine and has helped a lot of people develop the bones of their plot. So check that out if you're having trouble. With that said, let's get started with Chapter 3 of Strand, The Silver Radio. Cranberry Drive. Even the energy to check behind him could lose Quincy his lead. He couldn't think of a single instance where a fugitive had eluded the Terra Lair Bolt Rangers. There might have been others that Strand covered up and dealt with discreetly. That sent a shiver down the back of his shirt. Quincy swung his arms with each bound, feeling for trees in the darkness. He stumbled into almost graceful turns and sidesteps until his foot plunked in water. Downstream, he recalled. He raced a couple hundred watery feet to a heavy metal disc in the grass. A service hatch. A crescent of light beckoned from its mossy base, where it would have been sealed if not for a younger Quincy. Back when Leon was more liable to humor his antics, the two of them had used the service walks to sneak around unseen. The view was an eerie plus. Quincy never thought they'd actually prove useful, but then he never thought he'd have an entire Bolt Ranger battalion tracking him. Where's the big guy when you need him? Quincy chuckled, if only to let a little hysteria out. He knelt by the bar he and Leon had left lodged in the opening and tried to press it down. A nearby rustle startled Quincy to more drastic measures. He stomped the lever down with both feet. The hatch flipped up with an alarming clang. Probably in bed since curfew, like he should be, Quincy realized about his old friend. Then he realized a few things more. The ranger's lights were lost in the forest behind him. The stripe of blood down his cheek dried, connecting his hairline with the sweaty bandana over his mouth. His legs threatened to seize. Quincy pulled the cloth down from his mouth for some fresh, filtered terra air. Not yet. He grabbed the old pry bar just in case and climbed down the creaking ladder to the surface walks. He hung his full weight from the handle to seal the hatch above for the first time in years. He turned the lock and dropped down to a wrought iron floor. Quincy strolled at a pace of certain leisure now. The rangers would scour the night, but their go-to method of augment tracking wouldn't work with him. At a time when he winced at his classmates' calls for fitting, Quincy was grateful that the port in his chest was still hollow. He gave the steel socket a little tap of gratitude through his shirt. Quincy knew the service walks would be empty. It hadn't been properly patrolled or maintained since he and Leon had discovered the malfunctioning hatch on their street. The world seemed so much bigger back then. Everything seemed to be closing in on Quincy now. Strand's great tower, 
the pressure to find his fate, and not least of all this suffocating, glass-paned catwalk. The service walks used to be an escape for him, from the constricting requirements and regulations of the academy. The view through reinforced glass filled him with wonder and inspiration when the depths below were an unfathomable fantasy. Now they were a threat, sharp as a dagger poking his spine. He hadn't come down here in three years since he received his first failing A card. Every glance could be his future if something didn't give. He looked out on the sprawling landscape beyond the glass with a different kind of wonder now, a terrifying kind. A few thousand feet separated him from the savage wilderness of the nether layer. Mostly it was blackness, aside from the ranger and rank outposts, the nether layer was dark as pitch at night. His eyes drifted from deep azure shadows that must have been lakes to black forests to the bright stains of Strand's most remote stations. Poor bastards that make it through the academy only to get sent there anyway. Quincy felt a brief pang of sympathy. He could just barely make out some smaller twinkles from the forest. Fires, perhaps, or people forced to live without. The amenities he had so enjoyed survived on the fringe. The wild men he and Leon had pretended to fend off and oogled at from here, a thousand feet above. He shuddered. Now that he was a few steps from the edge himself, he couldn't help but see a certain irony. The only part of the tower that touched the planet, the home the humans left behind to survive, reserved as an exile for unfit miscreants. Last stop, Quincy mumbled when he passed under a flickering sign that glowed Cranberry Drive. When he climbed the ladder and closed the hatch, he left thoughts of the nether layer where they belonged, below. If he was going to stay topside, he had to focus on terror matters. The academy, getting fit, the stunt he, Jess, and Aaron had pulled tonight would buy him a little time at least. He wasn't sure if he bought into Aaron's aspirations of change just yet. Of course he could afford to believe. Aaron and his augmented mind were bound for the top already, the Venture Layer Labs. Let's just get home first, Quincy reminded himself. He was the only person on his street that night. With winter curfew in effect, people were out until the very last second running their errands, so to be alone in the violet night glow was a haunting novelty. Quincy rolled his feet, heel to toe, quiet but in no rush. Strand's ranks rarely made trips to the quiet laborer's district of Greenknoll. He twitched out of his calm when a string of lightning danced up from the ground a mile or so away. In a second, it flashed up a thin metal pillar that seemed to merge with the dark sky. It branched out and faded inside a million little channels. Guess the curfew does make a little sense, Quincy noted, calmer when he realized what it was. Green Knoll was a corner sector, nestled at the foot of one of the four columns that held the tower together, the basal column. It was camouflaged as endless blue sky during the day, but he supposed it would save on energy to drop the veil at night. By all rights, no one should have been out to see it. Quincy paced past the last three houses on the block. 135, Ellie Corella. 139 was Leon. He couldn't bring himself to face it. Quincy turned to the last mailbox, 141 Cranberry Drive. The name Percival Femino was engraved on the side. Quincy crept across the pavement. He turned his stolen key in the door and slipped inside without a sound. Before he was across the living room, a voice broke his step. Hello, Quincy. He winced. Quincy turned to find a soft blue light murmur on the side of a gaunt, pale face. He'd slept about as much as Quincy had. Hello, Percy, he said to his uncle. So we, we hit a kind of a turning point with this chapter here. We shifted a little bit from the intro action to more of a world building section. We get introduced to the nether layer for the first time, Quincy's future if he can't turn his act around, and we see that he does have a guardian, an uncle named Percy. So I hope you guys enjoyed that chapter and I hope you're looking forward to getting to know Quincy even more and watching him evolve through this saga and his journey across the tower. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, I really appreciate all the lovely comments you guys have been leaving me about my book. Let me know what you thought of this chapter, what you want to know more about, what you're intrigued about. And if you didn't like it, tell me what you didn't like so much. Again, and if you want to support what I do with The Roadside Writer, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. You can become a supporter for me on Patreon. Help me get rid of this banner, please. And if you need more writing help than you get from these weekly writing videos, 
please check out my website, subscribe there, and check out my course, The Basics of Plotting a Novel. It's only $20. It's five modules, over an hour and a half of interactive coursework, and it comes with worksheets and transcripts. It's a great deal for $20. So if you're struggling, check it out. Please do yourself that favor. See you guys next week for our video about mysteries. Roadside Writer, out.